Pat, that angle of incremental decline relates a lot to the uh, cyclical history theories, like the generational theory. It is a massive topic and depressing if true. Yeah, look, I, and, and I knew that as soon as I started using that example, people would be going like, oh, look at this woke tard calling everyone Nazis. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Mm -hmm. And um, the one step that's been taken has got us where we're at. Doesn't mean it's going to go to that in nth degree. No, of course it doesn't. But I'm sure 15 years before 1942, when they had their first step, they wouldn't have been thinking that either. Yeah. Would have been a step a... that would have led to another step, which would have led to another step. And as I said about the, uh, the, the referendum, if you take every worst case scenario from there, the worst step you could, who knows? Yeah. I mean, it's something called the banality of evil, right? It, it's very easy to go well you know they the nazis were monsters they didn't they, they didn't go to fucking 100 straight away and you know when you look at people doing monstrous things before after now doesn't have to be to that degree but you know they're real normal people that have sort of gone i'm gonna do this fucking off the chain thing and, you know and like, it probably didn't happen out of nowhere and in that documentary i don't know how old it is um, because you would think that the lawyer who tried some of these Nazis at Nuremberg would probably be well past by now. He looked, there is, he is speaking. He, one of the lawyers is speaking in this documentary. He might be 103 or he might be 80 and it might be from 20 years ago. I'm not sure. However, he was said he was interviewed by CNN and he was asked by CNN about these, how did he relate to these pure evil men? And he said, I don't, I don't think they were pure evil. And the uh, and the guys from CNN went, well, what do you mean? Like all these, they murdered all these people. They killed all these people. And he just went, well, were the guys who dropped the bomb on Hiroshima evil? Because they murdered and killed a whole bunch of people as well. Hmm. Outside, they were, they were war crimes. There's no question that Hiroshima was a war crime. But they're on our side. So our side can't be evil. So this relates, I guess, a little bit to this conversation that if you're speaking about sides in politics, those on your side might seem right. Remember, we did this the other day about about bias. The reason yeah. that you may disagree with me saying something fair, which is supporting the uh, left, is because you're supporting the right. So I'm not I'm not saying something that resonates with you or that you agree with. So you think I'm wrong. I may not be wrong. It might just be different. My side see things different from your side. I don't like using the word sides because I don't think we have to be split like we are. But the guys who dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, Americans think of them as heroes. The people who killed all the Jews, America thinks of them as evil. So many thousands, millions, tens of millions of people died. But when they're on your side, they're good and proper. When they're on the other side, they're evil, Joey. Oh, yeah. And, and things can change uh, over time as well. Like, And, and it's, it's based on the time you're in. Like this, this strategic bombing campaign of World War II. You know, you would not be able to get away with that these days of like, well, you know, we can't quite hit the factory. So we'll just hit the suburb that the factory's in because that's where all the workers live. Yeah. Um, you know, that that's a conversation that happened and it was the legitimate tactic of the war. But you could not do that today. Well, let's just relate it to something today. The, the cognitive dissidence that must go on in someone's head who goes... Israel blowing up apartments with civilians inside them is just. The cognitive dissidence that you have to go through to think that is mind-blowing. Mm. To go, Hamas did these things to these innocent people and killed them all and, and you know, and um, kidnapped them. So therefore, we're going to go kill all these innocent people who are in buildings in Gaza. The cognitive dissidence one has to go through to get there. But that's because if you're someone who believes that Israel is, you know, God's land and it's the one you support, then blowing up a building seems to be okay and just. Yet Hamas, Palestinians perhaps, I wouldn't say, I won't paint everyone with the same brush, who support um, Hamas, you know, going into occupied territory and pulling out families and killing them, those innocents, that's evil. When we kill innocence, that's fine. It's just, I don't get it. Yeah. And like, and if, people are wondering, if people are wondering where we sat, we said pretty clearly last week, I 
feel more of a calling towards the cause of Palestinians being shut in that area with the big walls up around them, but we reject wholeheartedly the actions of Hamas. Just in yep. case anyone Hamas, wanted to know. Hamas can get fucked. The yep. IDF can get fucked. Yep. And Benjamin Netanyahu's government can get fucked. They're all just shitty. Oh.